Hey there folks, Caleb Downing, Downing Industries, and today we're going to talk about this Pinty Optic and mouse it up to this AR. Let's get into it. Alright, so disclosures and all that kind of stuff out of the way, let's talk about this real quick. Pinty does send me stuff from time to time, optics and lights and... I think some lasers and I think they're gonna send me some glasses and things later. They send me stuff, okay, basically. And so my agreement with them is they can send me stuff and that's fine and I'll talk about it and that's fine, but I'm gonna be honest. So if it's good stuff, it's good and if it's bad, it's bad. I'm not gonna try to pump something up that's just not worth its weight in cheese. You know what I'm talking about? So that is needs to be put out there. Um, I did not pay for this, this was sent to me, okay? so. Moving on from there, I do give my honest opinions about stuff, and I like when people send me stuff like this, not just because I like stuff, but it gives me an out if I don't like it, because I'm not having, I'm not having to defend a purchase. If I spend a bunch of money on something, I'm going to have a tendency to be like, well, I bought it, and I spent my money on it, so this is why I need to justify buying it now. We don't even have to worry about that. So, we're going to talk about this, a Pinty Optic. Um, this is obviously going to be a Chinese optic for those people that really, really worry about that kind of stuff. As is along with like most of everything else that you buy nowadays. So anyway, I'm going to just move on from there. Uh, this is, I believe, it's a, it's like one of those standard 3 to 9 variable power scopes, basically. Not a red dot, but like scope. Um, 3 to 9, and I think it is a 40 millimeter objective, I think. So 3 to 9 by 40. But it does look like it's got red and green um, illuminated reticles, right? So you got, and you, got, you got your dust covers and stuff. Pretty lightweight, um, for whatever that's worth. Uh, does not have those tactical turrets, right? So the exposed turrets, you have turret covers, right? So that you can do your adjustments. Yeah, audible tactile. That's nice. I like audible tactile clicks. They say they are one click is one quarter. There he's upside down. One quarter of an inch at 100 yards. So quarter inch adjustment. So that's good. That's good for a scope. That makes sense. Quarter or an eighth or something like that. That makes sense. Instead of like one click is one inch at 100 yards. That's a little bit too much. Quarter inch. Yeah, that's doable. All right, you got your clean cover, snack pack, uh, instructions, which everybody needs to read. A bunch of bubble stuff. Kids are like that. Um, and then it did come with, I do believe, some rings, right? So these are some rings, and I don't know, let me look this up real quick. All right, and this is a one inch tube, not a 30 millimeter tube or whatever the other popular ones are. This is a one inch tube, so keep that in mind. But it does come with your rings, and they do look like some standard high rings. And they don't look like there's anything super uber special about them. Um, they just have two screws on the top, right? Some, some scope mounts have four, some have... I think I have had some with like six, which I don't know why you'd need that on a regular rifle. Uh, but then you kind of have a thumb screw adjustment tighten tightening hoochie pucker, whatever, on the side, right? That has a big slot on it for a flathead screwdriver if you want to use a flathead screwdriver. And there you go. That's pretty easy. We didn't have to use a bunch of weird levels and things and stuff. This seems to be pretty simple. Um, so these little scope turret things, I can see these popping off already because they stick up. They don't fold flat. Um, but it is nice, especially up here. We got a lot of snow and stuff, so it'll be good to keep the snow out of the actual optic itself. But there you go. That's kind of a look at that. Let's go ahead and put the battery in it, and I'll try as best as I can to show you the, the reticle itself. I'll try. It doesn't show up in camera a lot of times, but I'll, I'll do my best on it. All right, the battery itself here is a 2032 battery, and thankfully they did not use a completely wacky random battery. Thankfully they have this guy. And do we actually have markings? No, we don't have any markings. So I'm just going to assume we have uh, plus side up, negative side down. That makes sense to me. Uh, let's go ahead and screw this guy in. Um, talking about the battery cap, you do have an O-ring, so hopefully that should help keep out a lot of moisture and dust and whatnot. Um, when you do screw these things in, just be careful when you screw them in that you don't over tighten it and that O-ring sometimes can fold on itself and pop out and then it's not an O-ring anymore. It's, it's O-ringed all the way around, it's sealed all the way around, but a little little spot where it bunched up. So make sure it doesn't bunch up. And just get it nice and snug. I've never really had these things accidentally come out if it's nice and snug, all right? So now, I should be able to look through the scope. Oh wow, yeah, we do have a reticle. All right, I'll try to show you the reticle. We'll do our best on it and uh, let's see if we can actually see it. All right, so you can kind of see that. There you go. So you got different brightness settings. I'm not sure how focused it is, but then that's your red settings, right? So you got red, 
all the way down, green, all the way down. So there you go. So you can kind of see that. Yeah, I didn't think that'd really show up, but there you go. It kind of does show up. Kind of a Christmas tree looking reticle, right? I mean, you got a lot of you got a lot of lines and a lot of data in there. So you probably again need to read your instructions to see exactly what all that means, and then actually shoot your firearm to be able to tell what that drop actually does for the caliber and the setup that you're actually running. All right, so there we go. That is a little look at the uh, at this scope. Um, interesting stuff. So I, I'm excited to get out and actually shoot it and actually test it out. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do that right now because we have quite a bit of nasty weather and I'm not about ready to go out and get myself stuck and frozen. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit before we actually get out and, and, and shoot this guy. So there will be a part two where we actually get out Put it on paper, see if it holds zero. I'm not really going to do a massive torture test where I, like, you know, beat the crap out of this thing, try to run over my truck. That's not really what it's for, necessarily. I think this would have a good a good use on, like, a 22, which I do have a 22 that I might end up just sticking this guy on. That seems probably to be where this guy would be best fielded, um, just depending on how well he can hold zero and stuff like that. And if he works well enough, I mean, you could use it on a setup like this for coyotes, um, pest control, things like that. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions about this, if you liked it, didn't like it, whatever, you let me know what you think. Um, if you got any questions about it, please do let me know. Um, I will just keep testing this thing out, see how it actually works, and report back to you all later in a part two. So y'all be good to be safe. Appreciate you guys watching, subscribing, and everything. Thanks, Penty, for sending this thing out. Hopefully, we'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.